Hello there, my name is Anthony Gray. Hello there, my name is Anthony Gray, and welcome to another episode of Grayscale. As you see here mounted on my board is a Native American cast um, bust, and I'm going to be painting it. Um, I'll be doing it with acrylic paint, and um, depending how it glow goes, I'll be doing a series of glazes and whatnot. This um, painting won't take me, usually won't take me very long to do, um, but I will uh, go through the process. It's almost like a little craft thing, something new to put on my channel. A um, little later on, in a few more days, I'll be doing the female companion um, to this. Okay, I'm filming it with a different ca uh, camera. So I will more than likely be out of focus. Because um, the focus is on the bust here. Alright. And when I come back, I will get started. I'll mix up some of the paints and such. And I'll start probably with the hair. And then after the hair, I'll start with the feathers. And after the feathers, I'll probably go on with the face and do then do the detail with the uh, the wrap here on his hair, the necklace, and the pendant here. All right, and we'll do it more or less in that order. So I'll start with the largest first, um, which will be the hair. And then we'll move on with the feathers and then the face. And the details will come last. Alright, so when I get back, we'll get started. And uh, hopefully this will be a pleasant experience for both of us. So stay tuned. Hey there, welcome back. Let's get started with the festivities. Alright, I'm going to pick a fairly soft brush here. Um... But before that, let's get a rather tight flat brush. I'll start off with the flat. All right. It's about a half inch flat. All right. You guys really won't see. I can't really push up uh, and show you too detail why you just have to look at it from back here. Half inch flat. Um, I will start off with the chief's hair. It will be jet black. Okay. Now... In doing these, one, have no fear. All right. I'm starting off with the black because traditionally Native American men and women have, quite frankly, jet black raven hair. All right. And since this is a mold, a lot of the details are already into the mold itself. Follow me. So, a lot of the detail work is already in the sculpt. Okay. And I'm just going over it with its flat black. I will take a smaller brush and go over some of the hairline that's inside where it's touching the skin a little bit. When doing these types of uh, molds, Especially if you're not too accustomed to them. It's been a while since I did one of these. Years actually. Um, so this is the first time for me doing it in quite a few years. It kind of never really leaves you. You might be out of practice a little bit. But it's not exactly painting uh, flat black or flat colors. All right. But this is pretty much a good bass tone. And then I can I can jazz it up as I go along.
the hair is 98% almost just about finished. Yep. I think we got everything with the hair right now. Okay. As you can see, as the color dries, all right, the light will give you your accents and your highlights. My light is overhead, so it's giving me that vantage point. If I turn on the side light, if, all right, it will give me another look. You follow me? Where it bleaches out one side, but it shows you the texture on the other. Okay, and you can see where it comes in at. So even though it's black hair, it just gives you shades of gray. All right, so that's where you would see the color all up in here, all up in it, all up in the part, parting of his hair here. Okay, up in the here, up in the here. All right, up, up in here, you can see the different shades. That's just with another light on. If I shut off my top light, you see yet another faction of his face. Now you can see the grooves underneath the brow, the side of his head. This is a very good uh, sculpt. The high cheekbones that Native Americans do have. Um, the top lip always just forward a little more than the bottom lip. The top lip also is darker than the bottom lip also. I'll show you that later. All right, but you can see the bridge of the nose and such, okay? But different variances of light on a sculpt will give you different looks. You follow me? All right. So that's basically how that goes. I'll turn the light back on. It gives it a different look. Overhead light comes back on. It bleaches it out. Let's shut off this light here. There. And yet it gives you yet another look. All right. So everything gives on this model a different look okay all right I'm just being retentive again I just see some spots that needs to oh I'm, I'm trying to color it black with a clean um, pen all right anyway that part is complete when I come back I'm gonna mix some skin color um, well, actually, I'm going to probably do the feathers next, um, and then work on the skin. Um, but I want to just get the feathers out the way. But I am going to, um, the feathers for right now will be a whitish gray. And then I'll tend to the black line here. All right, and, and uh, we'll just mess around that way. So when I get back, I'll mix some skin color. I'll mix a little bit of white gray for the feathers. I got a brush that I'm going to show you that I'm going to use the feathers with. And then we'll just continue on. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Hey, we're back once again. Okay. I said there was a brush that I wanted to show you guys. And I'm going to show it to you as soon as I can find it. There it is. All right. These brushes are pretty cool. It's a rake brush different varieties, different sizes, and yeah. yeah, you should be able to see it here, there you go, it's a rake brush, this one's angled, alright, you can see the grooves within the black hair there, okay, I'm going to use this for the feathers, okay, okay, the feathers are going to be a grayish white, so I'm dipping into my white, a little, little bit of black, Now I'm going to dip this into some water. I'm thinning down the paint a little bit. Now, there's grooves within the feather. Hundreds and hundreds of them. So that'll actually help. Alright, and here we go. Now when it gets to the detailing, I will use the same brush for the striations of the feathers and such. But I just wanted to show you actually what it does. Actually, I would show you better if I just painted flat black first. I wanted to show you the brush because I was just anxious. But basically that's what it does. Alright. So I'm going to use, I'm going to keep this right where I can easily access it. Which will be right here. I'll keep it right here. So we're going to use 
Uh, yeah. I guess I can use a smaller, like a half inch, oh, a half inch, right there, half inch flat. I'm getting some more white, and a tiny touch of gray. Okay, and we're just gonna paint the feathers right in there. You see the grooves? Just by me painting this, you see the grooves here? Okay. That's the way the grooves are supposed to look. I'm just make, mixing some more. Same shade. I'm going to get a tiny bit of water just on the tip of my brush, loosen up the paint. And we're going to continue on right on the other side here. Make sure you get all of it. And since this is only black and white, easily mix more. I can easily mix more that will maintain the same shade as the previous mix. Because it's just black and white. And it's more white with just a touch of black. That's all. So, once again, I'm getting more white smallest bit of black makes it right in there and you can easily see when you're mixing if the tone matches the previous tone because you already have the previous color on there so there won't be no crazy variances of, of shades of color not unless that's what you're looking for And if you want to really cover in everything, you just go along with the grain of the mold. That's all. That's the fun thing about painting uh, molds. I'm getting some more white. Since the camera is not on here, I'll just describe it to you guys. I'm just stirring it together, make sure it's the right combination of colors. Also, remember, keep in mind, as the paint dries, it's going to get flat, so it'll appear darker. So don't be uh, put off by that. Just the nature of the beast with, with uh, acrylic paint. So, if you end up trying to go over what you've already previously put because it looks darker or lighter. That's because the paint is drying. All right, be mindful of that. And once again, life will be much more easier for you. You don't have to beat yourself all upside the head. I'm just painting underneath here. Get every little nook and cranny, all right? And it's not a speed race.
head. Go straight across. Don't try to make angles. Because this is a sculpt. You will see the angles anyway because of the perspective of your own eye and where you are in relation to looking at this fellow. Alright? So you don't have to draw angles on it. It's going to be pretty much three dimensional no matter which way you look at it. You'll see when I pan the camera around this guy. Come around and around. Let's put some little character right in here. Follow the green of the hair. It's doing it for you. If you don't like the way some of it's turning out, guess what? If you don't like the way some of it's turning out, you have black. Go right, out, go right over it again. Get black and approach it again. Okay. Like so. Alright. Like this stuff in here, I'm not too fond of, so I'm going to go over that. And it's not very difficult to do so, because all you need is black. And you cover it right back up, and you do it again. So, in this area here, I'm not really too fond of it. So, let's get rid of it. See how easy it is to get rid of it? You can all, always do your own makeover. Acrylic will go over acrylic. Pure. There. Just get rid of it. There. All right. I'll zoom it up close so you can you can you can tell you can see. Um, I like the way it's coming out so far. Looks pretty cool. Pretty neat. Straighten up some of these here. Make it a little darker. A little more pronounced. That's a little character, has some dark streaks of darker feathers in here. Yeah, that's a little character to this fellow. And I can go back over that with white or gray. However I want to do it. Put one right here. Just like that. And just put some right in here. Just like that. Okay. See how it's coming to life there? Okay. His skin will be the next thing we'll do. Alright. So when I get back, I will... Um, Make some good skin tone here, and we're gonna go for the skin and do some. Uh, as I do the, do the uh, skin for his face, we're gonna go over do some um, one stroke shading and such for this guy. There's some general one stroke shading that's gonna help out the way he looks, no matter which way you turn him. All right, and I'll show you that in a second. Be right back. Hey there, guys. All right, back to the festivities. Now, he is a Native American individual, and what I'm going to do with him first is I am going to use terracotta. Terracotta and white get it fairly light. The first coating of his skin will be the lightest, and then I can go darker from there. So it's terracotta and white 
and I'm just going to base tone his entire face. And here we go. <sighs> don't be worried, don't be scared. Go right into it. Now, if you get terracotta into the hair, have no fear, that's what black paint is for. Alright, I'm going to put terracotta in the middle of his scalp. And deal with it when I get to the black. Okay, I gotta get out of you guys' way. Sorry. Now, if, and I will say if, you get some into the hairline, what not, have no fear, the hairline is black, so don't cry, don't panic, make sure you have enough of your skin tone, also, if it's supposed to be lighter, now I'm just using terracotta and white, so I can mix it to the skin tone, alright, the base skin tone is no big deal. I kind of know what color it will be. Right here, his chin, lighten it up a little, just like that. Don't worry, it'll blend in when it dries. Okay, let's see how he's starting to look. Let's turn on the side light. Alright, let's turn off the overhead light. There you go. Interesting, yes? Okay. Pretty cool. Now, I'll let it dry a little bit. I'm going to start with some glazing. I'm going to glaze some brown and the terracotta. It'll be like a dewberry style of glazing. Now, what I am going to glaze is the side of the face, underneath the chin, underneath the brow. Okay. The other side of the face, round them right out. Okay. It will be the same color with the dark brown. It'll just be underneath where his hair is. Natural shadow. 
where you see the shadows at naturally. All right, the shadows under the chin to be the shadows on the side, and shadows on the other side right over here, and shadows underneath the brow. You can naturally see it by the way the light is hitting to begin with. Okay, and those are where the shadows are going to be. And then I will take a very fine line um, um, brush, and I will go into the wrinkles of his face. Okay, it'll be just darker terracotta underneath the groove here and there. Okay, we're going to darken up that top lip there. And we'll maybe a little shading underneath where the nostrils are. Make it a little darker here in the pit of the nostrils. Okay, and that would be pretty much it for his face. And we'll deal with the jewelry, which would be a you know, rainbow of certain colors or whatnot. Alrighty, alrighty then. So, when I come back, we're going to do the, the uh, we'll do the jewelry, we're going to do the eyes, and the final shading of the face. Alright, so stay tuned. Hey, what's going on? As you can notice, if you haven't noticed, I have um, mixed in, or I burned the picture a little bit closer. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm mixing in a dark brown and terracotta together. I'm going into my vegetable glycerin, for those of you who are familiar with me using vegetable uh, glycerin. Okay, it's just a gl I'm making the glaze of both of these. <clears throat> of both of these, I'm going to use the dark brown and terracotta mix along with just the pure terracotta. All right, uh, maybe a slight touch of touch of white, uh, slightest touch. But what I'm doing is getting a nice two-tone uh, color. I'm going to do the side of um, the Native American head here. Just a, a little shadow, but I'm trying to keep the terracotta color, skin color, yet just add a little bit of the shading. And we're gonna go from the sides here, which is why I turned the, uh, turned the camera uh, toward this side of the face. And here we go. Just side of the face right down in here, right underneath. And I'll go over it again, get a smooth, gradual, deeper tone in the side of the face. Remember, this is a glaze, okay? Making sure to keep the darker tone toward the hairline. Alright. That's basically all I'm doing. darker underneath now to prevent a line showing one of two ways I can do do that I can just take the clear water and just disappear that little border part right there and it just be darker underneath now I'm taking some brown and terracotta mix together like a glaze and going directly underneath his chin just to deepen the color there right underneath the chin oh you guys can't see it sorry my head was in the way whoops doing it again sorry about that getting some more brown Need some terracotta, mixing it in together. And once again, I will go underneath the chin. I'm going to move my chair back. So I'm going to get out of your way. Take a seat. And go underneath the chin on the other side. It will be very subtle. Just like so. Most people will see the difference, but don't know why. But that's why, it's just a simple skin tone change. Okay, going into my dark brown and terracotta, one stroke variety. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it's the same thing that I've presented on the other side of his head. 
Okay, it's a little darker on one side here, but I will lighten it up with the terracotta and mix it right in. Right in between both of them. Make the transition. There we go. And remember, it gets flat as it goes on. Just like so. Lighten it right up there. And I'm going to do the same thing underneath his brow. <coughs> Getting some of the vegetable glycerin. Going into my deep brown. Going into the terracotta. It's almost like the Donna Dewberry style of, of painting. Okay. And right underneath his brow, right underneath here. We're going to get a little, little, little dark shading right there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Right underneath his brow for where we want this deep tone. Right up in there. Like so. And we're going to go a little bit underneath right in here. Just like so. And I can get some of that extra color right out of there. If I don't want it. Just wipe it away, blend it right around. Because I just want the underneath to be darker. That's it. There. Just like so. We're going to do the same concept underneath his chin. We're right in here. Little pit in there. A little bit of dark brown, a little bit of the terracotta. shading in there. I'm rinsing off the brush. And I can fade. There we go. Fade some of that color out of there. Just underneath. Like so. Alright. Top part of his lip will be a little darker. Than the bottom part of his lip. All these little nuances and shades add to the realism of your character.
there, just like so. All right, and then we're going to get into the detail of his. Um, now, it might appear to be too gray, and that's fine because we're going to lighten it up a little bit, just in certain spots. Not entirely everything. We'll get a little brighter in spots there, like that. Okay. Add some variances in that color. All right. Okay. Now, when it comes to the eyes and the eyeball, I'll probably zoom in a little more um, for the eyes themselves. So, let me uh, shut the camera off, zoom in a little bit, and we'll continue to continue on. All right, we got, we're back. As you can see, it's an extreme close-up here. I'm going to do his eyes. Give him some deep brown hazel uh, brown eyes here. Now, in doing these eyes, I got to keep in mind that there's going to be a little strike. I'm glazing, actually terracotta brown mix with um yeah terracotta and brown now it's got a glaze on here that's why you see a little bit of streaking but that's okay but when i put the other colors in there all right they'll be a little more solid so when i get the eyes pretty much the way i want them Obviously, you're not going to see the whole brown of the eye. But something like so. Alright. We're going to do the same thing. Try to get it the same size on the other, on the other side. Make sure he's not cross-sided. And doing something like this. Everybody has a different approach to them. As I'm doing this, I'm going to obviously stand back and make sure this poor guy isn't looking. His eyes are looking in two different directions. All right. There. No, I will stare at him, and he's staring directly back at me. <clears throat> I will let this dry and the next coat with this very tiny brush will be solid a solid color and then I will do obviously the iris which will be dark I will do the slight black outline on his on his eyes also eyes are not won't be a complete circle more like a very wide oval little slight curvature in the eye okay now this stuff does dry rather quickly as you can see because I'm putting on the second layer already all right around here it will be the dark of the eye anyway but I want a very solid color to his eyes so it's more like a a touch than anything. And keep it as close to the original circle you had or semicircle. Like so. Okay. Okay. I will keep it as such right here in the center keep it as round as you can all right and close to the center as you can 
This will make or break your piece. If I got it too large, like the way I got it right now, I will see how it's bleeding through. But that's okay. Let it do that. Get a thirsty brush. And you can get rid of that. Try off the brush. And you can do this, just do your correcting that way. I can get rid of that to reshape it. So I can correct that. Remember, you got a color that can go over this. So don't fret if you tend to mess up or it gets away from you. You can recover like so. Okay. <clears throat> So have no fear, you can always recover from it. Okay. And I will go back. I will let it dry and go back over it again. like so. Okay, let's go on the other eye. Trying the brush around. You will get a feel for your brush. Alright. And I will get it a little larger. So, <clears throat> and I'm going to add, let's see if I got enough white here. Yep, I do. Let's add a little shine to his eye. Like so. Okay. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I can take an ultra fine marker and make the, uh, I'll just show you. I got an ultra fine. Make sure it's a good ultra fine marker. If not, you're just going to embarrass yourself. I think I got one here that'll work fine. This is where you get really into it. fully dry if not I can go over it again with an extra fine brush because it doesn't seem to be catching but that's fine okay I won't do it with that I'll just use an extremely tiny brush and I'll do it that way thank goodness I got my glasses on right okay here we go very very delicately Very fine. Like so. Okay. Now I will take the camera and I'll show you the face. Let's go back a little bit. I'll I'll focus it for you. Well, <laughs> Of course it's going to focus, right? There you go. 
All right. So, let's take a look at with the other light. Like so. Let me get behind you and I'll shut off the other light. The overhead light I'll shut off. There you go. Looks a lot better. But you get to see what he looks like here. Okay. And that's not even a straight on view. That's more of a straight on view of the guy. Let's focus that. There you go. Alright. That's a straight on view of him. Okay. And we'll pop the light back on. And he's pretty much looking dead at you. Alright. Let's turn off this light. There. Okay. As the uh, camera's compensating, let me get in front of you here for one second. I'm taking a paint board. Let's block some of this overhead light. Right, let's see if we can block some of that light. Can it? Yeah. You can see some of that. Let's see. Nope, this is too opaque. I need a thicker board. Hold on. I got one for you. This will take care of that. Get rid of some of that overhead. Like, there we go. Okay. Like so. So you can kind of, there, see the difference. If I block some of that light from it. And then bring the light back. Hey guys, what's going on? All right, we're approaching the final leg of this deal. Okay, my hand would be a little out of focus. I got the chief flat on the surface here. All right, because <clears throat> I'm gonna deal with all of this stuff here. All right, so I'm just sitting in the chair. I got the above light turned off. I got the other light on. So you guys can pretty much see the texture from the shadows. Okay, I'm gonna start on the red little rag scarf thing that he has on. Nothing but pure acrylic paint. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's all I'm using right now. Be extremely careful on the edges where his hair is. All right. And I will just, as of right now, just paint it in there. Now, a lot of this of what I'm doing will uh, be accented by the folds and the creases in the mold all right so going as close as I possibly can without touching his face now this uh, table I got is one of those fold up dinner tables that's all it is now I don't plan on keeping my folded up dinner table nice and pristine that's not gonna happen I already bought it in the mind that it's going to get marred up, painted up, more than likely scratched up. But it was only $10. It'll be $10 well spent. Because I can show you stuff that's meant to be uh, painted horizontally. I'm doing it on a vertical board. So, I kind of needed to get this anyway. I'm being very mindful of the other jewelry on his neck all right and I'm also being mindful of the hair down below so I'm still being extremely careful and plus I gotta keep my hand out of the way I should have did this obviously on the other side but I'm a lefty so I'm just uh, making do the best I can It'll be somewhat comfortable doing this. What parts you see me paint that you don't see is actually the other side here. And if you happen to go over, you have black paint. I didn't go over anything. I'm just letting you know. 
and the paint is drying as I'm talking to you because it's getting pretty warm in here. I don't have the fans on, so I don't want to compete with the. Um, I don't really want to compete with the fan because I would lose. But all right. Anyway, that part is done. Okay. If I wanted to um, mess with the creases in the folds, I can add. I got a little bit of red left. I use a little bit of red and a slight hint of black in that red. All right. And I can mess with the creases underneath. Just a little bit here and there. While it's still wet, if I kind of go over a little too much, I can wipe that away. But just like that, just little creases here and there. Rinse off the brush. Rinse it off pretty good. My towel's right here. And if I go, like I say, a little, little over, wipe it away. While it's still wet, you can still wipe it away. Like so. Just get rid of it. Now, here's the thing with uh, metallic colors, alright, <clears throat> some metallic colors, once you put the varnish on them, they may not hold its uh, glitter or its shine, okay, I'm looking for one of my metallic colors, I know I got it around here somewhere, I'm just searching for it right now, is this you? Nope. I got it here somewhere. I got to get up and look for it. I do have a metallic um, silver. And I'm looking for it. Ah, oh, there you are. You're hiding. Hey, gotcha. This you? Yep. All right. I'm going to brighten up this little medallion. Uh, make it a little a little silver. Hopefully, it when I, when I spray it, it, uh, uh, it'll keep. But if not, I try. So. Metallic colors also um, have a tendency to take more than one coat. All right, um, the material that this is on is kind of porous, so we will find out, like right now. You gotta kind of put it on uh, thick, also. Be careful around, obviously. Where it touches skin or hair. Okay. Now the reason why you gotta put it on thick is because this type of paint is not as uh, not as thick as the other stuff. So you have to put it on kind of heavy. I remember even though it's um it's acrylic all right uh, these these metallic colors tend to streak but give it time give it a chance to spread out okay
my hand is blocking right now because I'm covering coloring the underside. Where the camera does not see it. And forgive me for that. Okay. Hopefully my hand is out the way for the rest. There. Okay. Now, remember, as it dries, it's going to take on a different tone. Okay. I'm go just doing the underside here. Like I say, this table is brand new, and I'm not really worried about it being colored on. This is pretty much what I'm using it for. So I'm not really too concerned about all of that. But there you, there you have it. Are right, you be able to see the shine and the glitter on this guy? Pretty good, pretty good. I like it. Okay, it tape stopped, so I don't know if you caught it, but I put the silver instead of the black. I kind of think it makes it pop a little bit. And some of it comes on the other side, some may not. Some catches, some does not. But I kind of like where it's going here with it. So. Okay, cleaning off the brush. Only got a few more spots to go, and then that's it. Then I'll turn the light back on, and I'll um, I'll stand it up here. Still looking at a few. I got a few um, white spots that I might want to uh, cover up a little bit. Maybe I know one of them I got to cover up. I'm just trying, trying to pick a color. Let's, uh, let's use a mixture of the light blue and the purple. Something a little different. Look at this weird looking gray color. Take some black, only a little bit left, and go right here under his nostril area. Darken it up a little bit. Gonna need a little bit of water. Loosen up some of this black I got. There we go, that's better. And let's do that again. Right underneath his nose. Right underneath his snows. Just like that. Of course, not too many people are going to be looking up under his nose, but the nostrils are there. All right. Okay. And that shall be the end of that. I will come back, and uh, I'll hold it in my hand, and you guys can take a good look at it. Hey guys, <coughs> all right, well, here we go. I'll tilt it, turn it. Okay. So hopefully it's still in focus here. Turn her around, him around, excuse me. Nice little profile shot there. Yeah, I put it back in focus for you guys. You can see the different shadows. Alright, top of his hair. Feathers here. Okay. There. See how the light hits it differently? 
Okay. Light hits it differently. You see the darkness on the side, up a, on the brow. That's not all shadow. I painted that in. Underneath the brow, it's darker. Okay, all subtle stuff. All right. There you have it. I'll I'll focus it there. There. So I hope you guys like it. Okay. I'll focus it right back again. There. And here he is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this session of grayscale. Um, I really enjoy doing it. Can't wait for the female one to come in. Smoother features and such. And you gotta, you know, do eyelashes and whatnot. Okay. Um, I will uh, do another one of these. Hopefully it won't be like weeks. Um, I'll be more on a consistent schedule with it. Um, once again, if you like it, put the comments. Whoops. Put the comments down here. Down below, down here. All right, and uh, I shall see you guys again next time. Once again, thank you for watching Grayscale. Peace.